same book. Uh, this is narrated by Joe, who's 16. It's 1960 or 61. Um, and Joe, fairly far into the book, says, he's thinking about his family, his mother, his mother is another involved with another man. His father has left for a few days. Uh, he's thinking about his parents a lot. He says, I knew, I knew you could know the words, but not match them with the life. But to be able to do it right said something about you. And I don't mean this to be a narrow question, so you can avoid the narrowness in it, but, I will, but to be able to do it, I think it must refer to knowing the words to match the life, the thing that he's talking about in the previous sentence. I know, but to be able to do it right said something about you. And what, 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 what is it, and what does it say about you that you know the, that you, that you know you know the words? You know it's possible to know the words to match the life. What does that say about you? What does Joe mean when he says it says something about you? Is, that, is he beginning to think of himself as someone who can narrate his own life a little bit or that he yes. knows he can't? Yes, I think it does mean that. But it actually harkens to something that we've talked about before, just a sense of responsibility. So, so, this is one of the things novels try to be an antidote for, which is to say a mindless, feckless, irresponsible use of language and, and, and to, to encourage encourage a more successful use of language, a more um, careful use of language, because it is, you know, Dennis Donahue says, and he's quite right, he says, language is where we find values, moral values, social values, political values, most compellingly found in, uh, in action. Language is where we find values most compellingly in action. Mm. And, 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 so, and so words which just come spewing out of our mouths all the time, and we basically Basically, most of our decisions on conventional understandings need to be brought back a little bit. And that's what a careful novel will do. A careful novel will try to say, oh, you think you know what this word means? Well, let me tell you what the consequences of this word is, like independence, for instance. You think mm. you know what independence means? Well, I'm going to write 478 pages to show you that, you, that something else is meant by independence, by I mean, all kinds of words. It tests language. Mm. I mean, a, you know, more than they are sort of excursus into character and, you know, narration of events, novels, irrespective of what kind of novels they are, if they're experimental novels or if they're sort of pokey, realistic ones like mine, they are, they are experiments in the use of language. That is what they are. And, and, and they're trying to bring language into your control and at the same time enrich <coughs> your control over it. And so a, a novel, a novel like Wildlife is really about a boy trying to find a, a functioning language for experience for which he perhaps does not have language right. or for which the language that he does have seems inadequate. Right. And so so knowing, that, knowing that he could someday have <coughs> the words to match the life is a step forward for him. Yes. I mean, I think when you feel that, when you feel the, the, the compulsion that he feels that the vocabulary I have for the sensations that I am experiencing is not a match for a writer that is a very strong and compelling feel. Because you think to yourself, mm, mm, I want to I want to do that. Do you yourself as a writer, not just the writer who writes a narrator like Joe, but you yourself ever feel that you don't have the words to match the life? Every, every hour or so. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Christina and I, for the last four weeks, have been reading my novel, uh, The Lay of the Land, aloud. She has a manuscript. I have a manuscript. We sit and we face each other across a room a lot smaller than this. And, and we read it sentence by sentence by sentence and, you know, question basically ten, word, ten word choices a, uh, a page. And, I, and I'm constantly feeling like uh, the word that I have found when I wrote the piece is somehow not the word that I want. And it, I don't know if this would be interesting to you, but, but I'll, I'll say to Christina, God damn it, what is the word? <laughs> and so, and so and I'll just be you know, pulling at my hair and, and she'll say, well, she's calmer than I am, and, and she'll, she'll say, well, it, a, a synonym would be blank. And I'll say, no, 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 I don't want a synonym. I want a word that starts with an aspirate 
and I want it to have three syllables, and I want it to have a long A in the third syllable. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Quick. And, and, and until I find that, uh, until I find that, so in other words, you know, D D Dick Hugo said that when, when language is reduced to being a form of communication, it is dying. And so what I want are, in choosing words that I think are apposite, I want words that sound the way I want them to sound, in addition to mean the thing I want them to mean. And sometime, if I can choose a word that sounds the way I want it to sound, has the right number of syllables, the right number of long A's and schwa E's, then I will actually extend what I thought I wanted to accommodate that word. Just to get it in there. Poetics. Well, that's poetics, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>